So in this video today, I'm going to show you how I root fig cuttings really easily. So the first thing you want to do with a fig cutting is you obviously want to unwrap it from the plastic and you want to identify the top part. Now this top green bit here is called the apical bud. That goes up, but let's say for example that yours doesn't have an apical bud. You want to look at the nodes and the large node is always the leaf node and the top node is always the fruiting node. You want to make sure that the leafy node is on the bottom and the fruiting node is on the top. So another way to identify which is the top and the bottom is to look at the nodes. Now they should be pointing upwards. If they're pointing like this, then it's an indicator you've got it upside down. So just always make sure that your fig cutting nodes are pointing this way upwards. So and there should be an upright growth. Before I start rooting them, I use a white paint pen to label them and that's going to help keep track of which one is which and it's really important if you're rooting multiple varieties. So I'm going to put it at the top. And this is where I just hold down to exit. And that's how you label fig cuttings. Once you've got your fig labeled, there is, there's a lot of options you can use to root them. Now I like to use these plastic cups because you can obviously see through the cup and you don't have to worry about if the fig's taken or not. All you need to do is just drill a couple holes at the bottom or you can melt a hole at the bottom too and you'll never have to worry about seeing if the roots are coming out or not. So these are my opinion a really good option. As much as I like these plastic cups I think these ones are better because if you take a look at the fig cutting I'll show you right now it's quite long now if you match them up the ratio is just is just the same so you can put this in really deeply like this and you, you can get more nodes um, under the soil that means you'll have a high success of rooting so I'll show an example of a fig that I rooted using one of these tree pots now if I take it out you'll see just how great the root system is now look how much depth there is to that root system and that's really deep and that's going to allow the fig to take with a high success rate you can definitely use these types of pots However, I don't think they're as good as the other ones because the depth level isn't as high. If you get a larger one like this, you can definitely use that. You just need to use more soil. So the next important thing when rooting figs is using a really well-draining mix that also holds onto moisture. Now what I have here is a mix of composted pine fines, coconut coir, and coarse perlite. This mix here is using that part and you can see how great the root development is. Right, let's say that you don't have that. I'll show you how to make a really great rooting mix. So all you need to do is use half perlite and half coir. And just give that a mix. And that's really great for rooting figs. So once you've got your fig ready to go into the pot, you want to make sure that you don't put it all the way to the bottom because if you do that there's no way for the roots to go so what you want to do is aim for a little bit below the halfway mark which is about 40 percent so if the fig goes here the root system below can establish itself optionally what you can do is use a rooting hormone like this now this is optional and you don't have to use it but if you want to have great success I'd, this is something that i'd recommend what i like to do is before i fill up the container i like to just put my fig cuttings in here I can mix it in a bit so it can get all over the, the nodes. I'll do that for the other one. I'll just leave that here for a second. While I have my fig cuttings rooting in the hormone for a minute or two, I'm going to fill up my container. I filled up my pot to about the halfway mark. Now, you just want to tap it down a bit so when you water it in, it doesn't settle too much and disturb the cutting. And I like to also make a little hole like this so the fig cutting has a uh, perfect fit to go in. So I'll take my fig cutting out. And as you can see, the rooting hormone is applied to the bottom nodes. So we'll take our pot and we'll make sure that it's in correctly and not too much like this or too much like that. And it'll go in like that. And that's it. Now what you want to do is you want to take the remaining soil and just fill on top of it. So I filled up my fig cutting container and as you can see, I've got one node here, one node here, and another here. So that's a total of three nodes that are exposed above the soil level. So for this other fig cutting, it's a lot taller. 
So I'm using this true pot and it's got a lot more depth to it. Now I've just filled it up to about the halfway mark and tamping it down just a bit. And you can also use these bamboo canes to make a little hole like this so the fit cutting can go in there. And then you want to take you want to take the fit cutting and place it in very carefully like that. You want to put two fingers around the fit cutting like this and fill up the rest of it with soil. So this mix is five parts composted pine fines, two parts coconut coir and one part perlite. So I think we've got a decent amount here. We'll just tap it like that. That will help settle it in. And then we'll keep adding more on top. Like I said, you want to fill this up as high as you can because the more nodes that are covered in the soil, the higher likelihood you have of rooting if you cut it. So this seems like a good amount. And we'll just tamp it down a bit. And obviously when you tamp it down, the soil is going to settle a bit. So you just want to keep adding more on top like this. As you can see, where we labelled it was very important because if we had put it down here, we wouldn't be able to see what type of fig it is. So just always make sure that you put your label near the top of the fig cutting, like this. As you can see, this one is in half parts perlite and half parts coir, and that's a really great mix. And this is more of a premium mix if you can find all the components for it. So these figs now are perfectly rooted in, perfect placement, and the only thing left to do now is water it in. So this is a type of product you can use to put into the water and that will act as a growth stimulant for roots. So I'm using sea salt. So before you add it in, just give it a bit of a shake. And just add it a bit, add a little bit in. So we just added our sea salt solution in. And we'll just give it a mix, combine everything. Cuttings with that. For the first watering of the fig cuttings, you want to saturate it quite a bit and you don't want to sprinkle it too much because all the mix could come out so just go in small sets. That was one so we'll do another one now. That's one, another one here, that's two. As you can see, all the soil is soaking through and it's settling down. After we watered our fig cutting, it's coming out of the bottom and that means that it's been perfectly saturated and it's ready to go. And that's pretty much how you root fig cuttings. It can take anywhere from two to 10 weeks. And if you wanna push it even further, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. This is gonna be another additional step that you can use to really increase the success of rooting this fig. So this is a 50 litre tote and you want to put your fig cuttings in here like this and preferably you want to buy one that's got enough depth for the fig cuttings to come out. So once you put your fig cuttings in the container what you want to do is spray it with a bottle like this and that's going to add a lot of humidity. So after you've put them in the tote what you want to do is Bring them in into your house and find a nice position. Got mine on top of two boxes here and that really helps with not having to bend your knees when you're working with them. Now, as you can see, just a reminder that you always wanna have the tote on about 80% of the way and just leave a little bit of a gap like here and that's gonna help with air circulation. About five minutes a day, what you can do is just take this off, let it get air for five minutes and then put it back on and that's it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider checking out the description for the products I used in this one and have a great one.